Rooster Teeth News is brought to you by NatureBox. Snack smarter with French toast granola, sweet blueberry almonds, and more. Get 50% off your first order when you visit naturebox.com slash roosterteeth. What's up, guys? I'm Ashley Jenkins, and welcome to a new week and a new era of Twitch Plays Pokemon. You did it. Or if not you, then someone else. After 391 hours of play, 1,165,140 players have successfully beat the Elite Four and chat spammed their way into Legend. Final stats released by Twitch reveal that more than 122 million commands were issued, and the stream had more than 36 million views for a total of over a billion minutes. The crowd play phenomenon began on February 12th with Total Anarchy, in which any button press command typed into the stream's chat would be executed in the game. After players were stuck on the first spinner puzzle in the Team Rocket hideout for pretty much an entire day, the anonymous creator implemented a voting system to switch to democracy mode and determine the next move by popular vote every 30 seconds, which participants did all the way through the Safari Zone and beyond. And now, we've gone color. Yesterday morning, the stream moved to Gen 2 and a Pokemon Crystal playthrough is underway with further democracy tweaks. And in a day and a half, the players have won the Zephyr Badge, Hive Badge, and Plain Badge. And even though it largely destroyed the chat system last week, Twitch is thrilled with the unique social experiment and hopes more people will think of creative ways to use their streaming platform. Marketing VP Matthew DiPietro says, This is one of the most interesting things we've seen on Twitch since we launched, and we hope to see more experiments like it. And making a tiny hop to Nintendo, the company has today officially unveiled the Yoshi's New Island Limited Edition 3DS XL we have already knew existed, but now we know what it actually looks like. Early last month, the Limited Edition handheld's existence was leaked by a British online retailer, but the image included with the listing was added as a fake, which featured a green console dotted in lighter green spots patterned after Yoshi's egg. The real 3DS XL will actually be green with an image of Yoshi on the front and a series of little Yoshi eggs on the white back. Also, unlike the leak, this won't be a bundle. Similar to the Pokemon X and Y versions that released last year, this console will be standalone and priced accordingly at $199.95 in the US. Yoshi's New Island is a 3DS follow-up to the 1995 Yoshi's Island for SNES and the 2006 Yoshi's Island DS. The game comes out on March 14th, and the limited edition Yoshi 3DS XL will be available the same day. And speaking of leaks, it looks like Titanfall developers Respawn Entertainment have tried to keep some surprises for the full version of the game, but details are coming out early, like the existence of zip lines, autonomous turrets, and a new mode called Pilot Hunter. The leak confirms a report from last month made by a fan who dug into the beta code and pegged the map count at 15, and details the Pilot Hunter mode as one in which you only gain points toward a match win by taking out enemy pilots. The zip lines will allow you to quickly traverse the map or attach from midair if you make a particularly spectacular jump, and the huge autonomous turrets will require multiple titans to disable them. Or you can just take a data knife to them and flip them so they support your side in battle. Titanfall comes out on Xbox One and PC on March 11th in North America, March 13th in Europe, and March 14th in the UK. It'll be out on Xbox 360 on March 25th in North America and March 28th in Europe. And while you're earning achievements in Titanfall on your Xbox or PC, soon you may be earning them for playing games on your iPhone. A new Microsoft job listing, which has since been taken down, reveals Microsoft's plans to expand Xbox Live functionality to games on iOS and Android. The posting says, we will create a modern framework that is open source, lightweight, extensible, and scalable across various platforms including Windows Store, Windows Phone, iOS, and Android. Some Windows Phone games already support Xbox Live feature sets like achievements, but it looks like Microsoft wants to incentivize your gaming no matter your mobile platform. And finally, Bioware reveals the studio's begun internal discussions about whether to bring the Mass Effect trilogy to next-gen consoles. Aaron Flynn, the GM for the Edmonton and Montreal studios, says, We have discussed a next-gen Mass Effect trilogy remaster internally. If we can put solid plans together, we'll share. Bioware is currently focusing its efforts on Dragon Age Inquisition, which is due for release later this year, and have teased the next installment in the Mass Effect series, which will be completely separate from the existing trilogy and reportedly won't feature Commander Shepard at all. Presumably, they're also in some stage of development on a new Star Wars title, since the studio was named as one of three development houses in EA's deal with Disney to make Star Wars games for the next 10 years. And that's it for today. Would you play the Mass Effect trilogy on next gen, or would you rather Bioware put their effort into new games? Let us know in the comments. 
Then check RoosterTeeth.com later this week for a new episode of our gaming podcast, The Patch.